Hi everybody, this is Kevin. And as you can see, I've got Lee Connolly doing a Zoom chat with me today. And uh, Lee is a podcaster, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. So hi Lee, how are you doing? Hello mate, I'm good. I'm um, a bit, it's, I mean, it's not great weather out there. I feel like, you know, January's a bit of one of them months. It's a, bit tough, it's a tough old month anyway, isn't it? So let alone yeah. what's going on at the moment. But I'm so good, I'm mate. Good. Overall, I'm good. Good, good. But I think you're doing some homeschooling as well, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Homeschool, weather, COVID. The three <laughs> things that I never, after this year, want to hear again. Okay, cool. So, Lee, let's, let's, go, let's go back to the, the very beginning of Lee Connolly. So, Lee, tell everybody that have been watching this where you were born, perhaps a little bit about your family background, your, your parents, perhaps what they did for a living. Um, just, just give us a bit of information from the Lee Connolly's early days. Yeah, so I was born and bred uh, Colchester in Essex, which um, I, just, I, I don't know what it is, that's your hometown, you always love it. I never want to leave, I love it so much. And uh, yeah, so I was uh, born and bred in Essex, and uh, my dad is a, is a builder, Mm -hmm. And um, my mum is, um, my mum used to be a playgroup teacher actually, but my dad's always been a builder. He's been a, a builder with my granddad. They started their own business literally the year after I was born. I think, was it, you might know Kevin, because um, you've been around a little bit longer than me. Was there, was there a big storm in 1989? 87. 87, wow, okay then. So their business started a year before I was born. So they must have been a good year. Uh, so they they uh, they started a roofing company together. All right, okay, yeah, yeah. And then a year a year later, I was born, and they still they still work together now. My granddad's coming up to eighty, and he's still going strong. Is he? Uh, wow, that's brilliant. Up on the he don't go on the roofs as much. He's he's a much better at holding the ladder now, but yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still out every morning. So them two have been going for uh, for yeah thirty three years for their business. Yeah. And um, yeah, my mum used to be a, a playgroup teacher, uh, and now she works at a shop in a hospital. And um, and yeah, so I've got a brother. I should mention my brother. I've got a brother. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Forgot about him. Uh, he's a pretty important part to it. Uh, he joined the family uh, in nineteen. I don't know. What year? Did he... Oh, a year later. He joined us a year later. We let him come into the family. So um, so yeah, we're pretty close now but you know when you're young you're not very close and you want to kill each other didn't you but um yeah 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 we're, we're pretty close now but yeah we had a, a, a really great childhood really good 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 so education wise what what did you do education wise obviously you were at, you went to school and things like that did you go on to further education and and college university tell us a bit about that I went on to become, you know, when you're asked when you're younger, oh, what do you want to be? And I was like, I want to be, there's a few things I wanted to be when I was younger. Like when, I'm talking like 13, 14. One was uh, a racing car driver. You've got to have dreams, right? Yeah. Uh, the other was a graphic designer, which I would have had to go to college and then university to, to do. And because my dad was a builder, I don't know why, throughout my whole childhood, I was like, my dad's got his business. You, you see these like father and son businesses going about. I always thought I'd be a roofer with my dad. He, right, yeah. He, he didn't agree with that. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that was not, I, I pictured it, but he did not picture that for our, uh, our future. Uh, but he, he always said he wanted me to get a trade. And right. uh, so, yeah, uh, the trade I chose in the end, rather reluctantly, was an electrician. So I sort of put my graphic design dreams to the side, to be honest with you, and didn't really um, go near him just because our family's never been into like college and university and things like that. It's always been, uh, been trades. Yeah. So, so yeah, I was, I went to become an electrician. So I did three years, uh, apprenticeship. Right. Yeah, yeah. Doing that. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it, but you know, <coughs> yeah. um, there's a, there's a lot of money to be made from, from any trade nowadays, really. Yeah, there really is. But I, I, one of the things that I feel that like I've got my own daughter now, one of the things that I feel like I'm not knocking my own dad because I wouldn't be in the place I am now without that trade. Yeah. Um, but I really believe in people doing what they feel fulfills them. 
And yeah. I suppose at that age, I mean, leaving school, no one really knows what they're going to do. Mm. Uh, but, you know, it shouldn't be a job for life. Like, you, you, you know, you work out what you want in the future. Mm. But, yeah, I love being an electrician. Like, don't get me wrong, my, my best days were my apprenticeship time. And I loved, I loved working where I worked. And, uh, and then I, as soon as I finished my apprenticeship, I went travelling for a bit. So, um, yeah, they were good times, mate. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I, I I did an apprenticeship as well, but mine was quite a few years before yours, because <laughs> I left school in uh, '69, yeah. um, and in those days you had to do a five-year apprenticeship, and it was you know you, you, your first year was on a Monday, then second year Tuesday, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, mine was a five-year apprenticeship as a painter and decorator, and and I'm still painting and decorating now. But so you know, it's apart from one or two years when the trades, building trade went through a slump, that's all I've ever done. Um, Five years to become a painter and decorator? Yeah. Well, you know yep. what trades are like, they're always digging each other out, but it's just, it's just slopping some paint up, mate, and it? It's easy. There's an old saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to use it on here, but, uh, um, it, it, well, let me put it this way, if you can pee, you can paint, that's what they used to say. <laughs> <laughs> and some people still do. Um, but the weird thing was that the apprenticeship was the first year you really did nothing to do with painting. You were doing more schoolwork and schoolwork that you'd already done when you when you left, sort of basically left school. Well, like a like a a recap. Yeah, but in a way, you 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 work for a firm. I worked for a firm called um, Eastman and White. Yeah. But so uh, when you were when you were not with them on the Monday, you were at college, but you were still doing schoolwork and the schoolwork you'd already done the, the previous years. Mm. So to me, it was a waste of time. And um, uh, it wasn't until the second year that I started doing, started doing to do with painting. And, but the things they were teaching me was how to tint the paint because you use, it's not like nowadays where you, you go to a shop and you order you know, half, a, half a gallon of paint and they put it in a machine and mix it for you. You, yeah. the, the, the decorator themselves, had to put the, the colour tints in and mix it until you got the right colour. It's quite an so, art to it back then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. How was that? But I, I, unfortunately for me, I didn't finish my apprenticeship because the two people, my two bosses, weren't happy with me going to college for five years and basically not doing anything to do with decorating until the preparation work and the and the application started in year three. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they pulled me out and they trained me themselves. So I really had a better, better training doing it through the, through the company than I would have done at college. So, yeah. no, so this, yes, it, five, five years for, for the for a painter and decorator. Yeah, wow. So there's something about, I mean, college is great. Like I spent a lot on rubbish at mathematics and the electrical course was heavy on maths. Mm. But I learned them. I learned the most being out. Like, I'm so glad I did an apprenticeship. You can. I could have done my course quicker and, and just gone to college every day. Yeah. But there, there's nothing like being out in the tools and actually, um, actually learning that way. To be honest with you. Absolutely. But the other thing about that being out on the tools, being out on building site, you're building up from school. Um, you're building up a way of communicating with people mixing yeah. with people when you're at school and you're mixing with your mates it's it's completely different to when you're out working for a living yeah. and because you you you're going in as a young bloke onto building sites where guys have been there 20 30 years and you might get some gobby young idiot going on onto the building site it's going to get a bit mouthy yeah. and what happens on a building site is you soon learn, soon learn your lesson yeah, there's, um, uh, there's something about being an apprentice on a building site, which uh, I still have nightmares now, mate. <laughs> yeah. About. One time I got, um, well, I don't know what I'm telling you. I've never told anyone this. One time I got um, electric taped up, mate. So I was like a mummy in electric tape. Initiation. And, uh, you got an initiation, yeah, I, did you? Yeah, I think a three-year initiation, I think it was. Uh, when, I, when I passed, I was like, see you later. <laughs> I, I had an initiation as a painter and decorator. I was tied to a scaffold around, oh, yeah. the, around the back of a house. The lady and her husband were out. And so the, everybody got me, 
tied me to the scaffold. You wouldn't get away with it nowadays. And my decorator's ovals were pulled off and I had paint put on. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, there's different rules on building sites. As soon as you walk through those gates, mate, it's a different world. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. And yeah, unless you've done it, you don't know what it's like. No, yeah, that's it, that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but great, you know, for me, great days. I loved it. It's, um, and I'm still doing it now, but you know, I'm a bit wiser now than what I was all eight years ago. After, yeah, what am I now? 40, 44 years, something like that, self employed. So, you know, you so. get the respect once you go over an age, you get the respect on a building yeah, site. I think that's what I, uh, and when I was there, I was too young to really ever get, you know, get that at that age because some little snotty nose, nose kid. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Showing off his new tools. That's it, yeah. So, Lee, this, so we've moved on for your education, um, or let's move on for your education, and you then um now let me get this right did you start working for the bbc straight away from there or what I did didn't. you do I, well i went um i did my apprenticeship and i went traveling i went to australia for a year all right and, okay yeah yeah you said just um, now. yeah which was i always wanted to do it it was sort of the idea was i'll be honest with you when i went i did my apprenticeship i did what mum and dad want me to do I'll go to Australia, go find myself, and <laughs> as everyone does, sure. <laughs> and uh, and when I was over there, all I was saying is people were like, oh, what are you doing over here? I was like, oh, I'm an electrician, but I'm going back. I'm going to be a graphic designer. Mm. Obviously, uh, I, I did. I come back and didn't become a graphic <laughs> designer. <laughs> and I spent a year working for my dad when I come back from Australia. So I got my, my wish in the end, and mm. uh, it, was, it was not all it was cracked up to be. Mm. And... Um, and then I'll become an electrician again. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, spent a few years doing that. And then I got into gardening. So the gardening thing come around 2016. So really So you, so you started with. doing gardening um, before you were involved with the BBC, with CBB, CBBC, was it? Yeah, of course, cool, yeah. So, so what happened was I met, I met my wife over in Australia. And uh, we come back and we moved in with each other um, after a year. And uh, then my brother, so I didn't see my brother as much. So I missed yeah. him. Yeah. And uh, we decided we'd go and start an allotment together, really. And it was from there, we, we, uh, we put a few bits out on social media when it was early, early days. And people started spotting us. And then uh, Jimmy Doherty, who lived, he lives, I don't know, half hour from us up the road in Suffolk. He's got a farm up there mm. and it's, it's an awesome place. I've got loads of kids and families and people come along to it. And he had an area which used to be an allotment and then it got overgrown. His wife used to, to do it and it got overgrown and the weeds were like ridiculous height. And he said, I've got a, a, an area of uh, the farm, which I'd like to turn back into an allotment. And we were like, yeah, cool, we'll do it. And it was ridiculous size. And we started to volunteer there and put everything into it. We worked. We took weeks off. I was still working as an electrician and my brother was still doing his job. And, uh, and he's friends with Jamie Oliver. Oh, so, right, okay. So we did, so we met Jamie through that, started doing a few bits for Jamie. And then we started doing bits for Channel 4 for Sunday brunch. And uh, then we did some bits for ITV. And then... Uh, yeah, BBC. We called BBC called us and said, "Will you come and do it?" This happened very quickly. So we started gardening in two thousand and end of two thousand fifteen, I think, start of two thousand sixteen. And by two thousand and seventeen, we were on the telly as experts, and we were like, <laughs> "Yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. We'd, uh, yeah, we'd we'd do it, sure." And uh, yeah, we become like the Blue Peter Gardeners. So we started the allotment up in Salford or Salford, or however you want to pronounce it. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> who, who knew? It's, don't get me wrong, we loved it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it would just sort of run, it come out of nowhere. It was just me and my brother trying to spend time with each other. Yeah, and yeah. it ended up being, well, for me, a career, and for him, you know. Mm. Um, go, just going back a little bit, you mentioned Jimmy something or other, what's his surname? Jimmy his, Doherty. His name rings a bell to me for some reason. Yeah, he's been on the telly, he does bits on the telly as well. 
Is is this is this something called Jimmy's Farm? That's the one. Jimmy's. I said, did I say Jimmy? I maybe didn't say Jimmy's Farm. Yeah, no, Jimmy's Farm. Know. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. Because I've yeah I've seen some of his programs and it, and the sort of things that he does, as you say, he encourages families and children to come yeah. to see the animals and and all that sort of thing. No, it's it's very good, boys. And 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 has he still got that farm going? Because that was yeah, brilliant. It's, it's an amazing farm. I think last year the, the, the TV programme started up again. It's, it's more of a zoo now. He's got crocodiles, monkeys, he's got all sorts there. It's changed a lot since I was there, do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, it's an amazing place. And, you know, I, we love doing it. We love being at Jimmy's. But, my yeah. God, it was hard work. And, look, and we were juggling a full-time job at the same yeah. time as volunteering there. And we had... But I don't regret it. I loved it. We had all our mates there and they got involved in the summers. It was great. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was quite as hard work just, yeah, just, yeah. To, just to keep that going. And, uh, and we also had an allotment in Colchester as well at the same time, which we had to give up in the end because it just, we just couldn't do it all yeah. um, at the same time. It's only yeah. so many hours in the day. So then, so, so we've, we've gone, so we've gone from that and you've, you've met, you've done stuff for Channel 4 and ITV then you worked for the BBC. How long did, were you doing the... Uh, was it um, a part of a children's, children's programme, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, for, for Blue Peter. I, I mean, I used to watch Blue Peter when I was younger. Mm. And I loved it. And to be asked to go on it, it was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, the only... You know, we were sort of... We were, the, we were classed... And this happens, and it will happen again. There'll be some young couple of brothers or friends... It will be classed as the new cool people, the people to make gardening cool, yeah. and that's what we were classed as. And, we'd, and when B, and when Blue Peter come along, we were not only the new cool things on the block, but we were also turned into kids gardeners. And you know, I, I loved it, but we didn't have kids. We didn't, mm. you know, obviously we were, <coughs> we were just, um, I don't even think we were married then, mm. but. I, you know, we loved it. We, then we started getting booked for shows and to do kids stuff, and it was great. The, my biggest regret from it, and if you can only really know this as soon as you have kids, is we were doing like gardening Blue Peter style makes for parents to do. Mm. And as you, I just, you know, we were 25, 26 years old. Um, you know, as soon as you become a parent, you realise, oh, actually, these, these things are not as easy to do with children. Do you know what I mean? Like, a great idea they look amazing it's a bit like pinterest or, or just looking on the internet and stuff yeah. they look incredible mm. but actually physically doing it with a five-year-old is a, a totally different thing um, so that's probably my biggest regret but, but at the time there's no experience or no way of knowing knowing that yeah of course I mean, yeah, yeah yeah but did you, you took this on the road though didn't you well we, we went on the road a lot <laughs> 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 we uh so that's i mean what, what happens when you get booked for tv stuff is obviously for like talks and stuff you uh you're booked for for talks all over the place which was good i mean i loved this my brother i had my daughter uh when we were on the road a lot and, and what's, uh, and what's and your then, sorry to interrupt what's your daughter's name name's olive olive love yeah yeah uh, yeah she's a, a little legend and um and then my brother had his his daughter he's got another one there he's got two at the moment i'm sure he's he's building an army and <laughs> uh, and you know it's it take it's when you're away a lot it's difficult especially with family and i and some people don't mind it and can get on with it i quite enjoyed it because uh, you're away in the summer, but in the winter you get to spend as much time with your family as you want. Yeah. Uh, but my brother didn't like it, so you know, um, I'm, yeah, unfortunately, we had to. We were we were called the Skinny Jean Gardeners, mm. but then he then he then he left. So it was um, he decided he didn't want to do it. But yeah. just because of that, just because of being on the road so much, and that was just and that is just part of the job. Well, not at the moment, obviously, because I'm, I'm missing it a bit. But that is just part of the job, being out on the road and. and and meeting people, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot so, of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah. So from there, where did you then? There, where did your career then take you after after that? Yeah. So, well, so we did that whole. We had three years of Blue Peter, and when you say three years, people are like, "Wow!" But I mean, on two hands, I could probably count the amount of times we actually showed up on there. It was, um, you know, gardening's not always the top of people's list of, of what's happening. Um, but I was still juggling being an electrician, and uh, that was 
you know, thinking back to it, it was difficult because one moment I was on TV or I was on a stage and I was thinking I was like uh, Jesus Christ. And the next minute, like, yeah. <laughs> and the next minute, uh, I was on a, I was on a caravan park connecting a caravan up to some electrics. So <laughs> it was a tough, it was a tough one then. Yeah. So one day, like one day, I'll be filming with a TV crew. The next, I'll be drinking tea in the mud. And um, so what happened was my brother left. He left Skinny Jean Gardens and went to go and do his own thing, which was fine. And um, and then I had a decision to make. So when I was a child, I was, I was really quite a shy person. I was not very good at talking to people. And uh, I, really, I really struggled. And, and that sort of went into my 20s. And when Dale left uh, Skinny Jean Gardens, I wasn't actually sure if I was going to carry on. So, I mean, he he carried some of the shows through without him. I wouldn't have been able to do them. Mm. And uh, I, I didn't really know how I was going to do it. So I spent a Christmas. I can't remember what Christmas, Christmas it was, Kevin. It was maybe 2017-ish. I spent a Christmas thinking about it. And during that Christmas, I went on a podcast with uh, Peter Donegan, who used to do a podcast called I can't remember what podcast it was a garden podcast I can't remember what it's called now and uh, I thought this is good this podcasting thing is pretty good um, and it'd be easy for me to get into because I, you know I still, still, was still a bit shy at the time and to get my message out there through audio so I started a podcast and uh, it went down it went down really well it was cool it was a bit different from everything else and um, I loved it and then it got sponsored and then I, a year later, from almost quitting, I quit my electrical job to oh, right. become a full-time podcaster. And that was literally two days ago. So I don't know what we're in. We're in end of Jan now. Two days ago, three years ago, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I quit. I quit electrics. That was the last time I, I did electrics. 